Hello, I am back and it is Monday the 10th and we are starting another weekly vlog and I'm afraid I have to pick up kind of where I left off last week and that is we are taking Molly to the vets for her checkup to make sure that she's okay and that everything that they've done has worked. So um, I will show you Molly in a moment. She's already in her cat box ready because I had sort of terrible trouble trying to get her in a cat box before so my partner helped me to get Molly into the cat box and now he has gone to sleep because he works nights so that's where he is so I will be taking Molly on my own and um, let's go and check up on Molly okay here she is caged um, hello Molly don't worry we'll be going to the vet very very soon and then we'll be getting back hello don't cry oh Molly she really hates being in the cat box Okay, we'll be going very soon, in about five minutes, I promise. Oh no, Molly, we're gonna go really, really soon, I promise. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at her claws. Oh <gasps> my goodness. Molly, stop getting distressed now. We are going very, very soon. Come on. I know. I know you don't like to go. This is stressful for Daddy. <sighs> Oh no, it's like a scene from Dumbo when the mum's in the cage and she puts her, her trunk through, through the bars. I know. I know. I think it'll be better once we're in the car going. Okay, I'm going to take you now, even if we're a bit early. Okay, we've made it. We are at the vets. Um, Molly is down there in the footwell. Can you see? I'll turn the camera over in a moment. Um, but she's down there in the footwell. We're about 10 minutes early. It's 12 minutes past 10 on Monday morning. I want to get this over and done with. Um, it seems like a saga that's been going on for too long. I just want it all sorted. I want, I want to come out of here. The aim is to come out of here just knowing that everything's okay. She's fine. Of course, we'll carry on with the medications. It was five days worth, so I've got um, including today, including today, I've got three more days left. Molly took her medication really, really well this morning. She took it orally from the syringe, so she did really, really well. Um, let's go and see Molly. She's been crying in the car all the way. <sighs> okay, so this is how I travel with Molly when we go to the vets. I just sort of wedge the cat box in between the seat and the and the dashboard. I know it's not secured. Um, should probably be secured somehow, but but anyway, um, no different than any other kind of box, I suppose, in the car. Except this one has precious cargo. It has my beautiful baby girl. Can you see? Oh no, she really doesn't want to be there. I'm going to go now and just sit in the waiting room. Um, I'm not going to film in there, obviously. Um, so I'll check back with you when we're done. Okay, we are just done with the vets. Uh, Molly's got some more medication, some more laxatives. I've got to keep her in for two days to monitor the stools to make sure uh, that she is passing them. Um, the vet could still feel a little bit of something up there, but she thinks it was new stools and not the old blockage. So that's good. Um, basically, it's all positive. She's even put a little bit of weight on, which is really, really good. So I'm going to get Molly home and tune in for the release. Okay, hey, oh, Rory's here. And so is Molly, and I'm going to let her out. Here we go, Molly. The second time you are released. Ah, oh, that was so much better. The ordeal is over, hopefully. Um, like I said, I have to keep her in for two days, just to make sure that she's passing stools correctly. And then, hopefully, ordeal is over. You're back. Hello. It's a little bit better than the last time that you came back from the vets. Um, but yes, yeah, still a little bit of trauma for you, my poor baby. Uh, that's it, you have a little stretch. There you go. I think we're all happy. And Rory is investigating, aren't you? What are you doing? You don't want to go in the cat box. Or do you? <laughs> do you want to go in the cat box? You don't want to go in there, you little monkey. You want to go back outside again, don't you? What's the matter? Hello, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this cat box away. Hi everyone, it is Tuesday the 11th of September and I've just had a bit of a traumatic experience as you've, as you've seen from the footage well actually I don't know if I'm going to include the footage before this or after um, but anyway, 
I'll show you the footage at some point. But I've just been outside for my my morning walk, my morning stroll with my cup of tea. Um, I let Molly out. Molly has finally, you know, passed a stool, so I've been able to let her out. It is quite dry, so I'm carrying on with the diuretics. But I heard this flap, and it was a pigeon. We have pigeons in the garden, quite a lot of them. And it, I, I saw it through a gap in the trees, and it kind of whizzed underneath the car. And then I saw Molly chasing it. And I went around to see what's going on, to kind of stop Molly with the bird it, to see if the bird was, was okay and it, it really wasn't it really wasn't okay there was no wounds that i could see or anything so i kind of shooed molly away put her in the house and then i went out back to the bird and that's when i got the footage that i've either showed you or i'm going to show you um and i thought the bird was just going to get up and fly away uh no it literally died right before my eyes i kind of said to the bird <laughs> Not that the bird can understand, but I kind of said to the bird, I'll stay with you for your last moments, I'll be with you. And I was, I was there. Um, it kind of, it opened its eyes, it looked at me. Well, at least I thought it was looking at me. And then it kind of showed, its eyes closed, its head drooped, its wing was shaking. And then finally the wing stopped shaking and it was dead. So then I thought, oh my goodness, it's just died. So I got a bag and some newspaper and wrapped it up and I disposed of the body um, as humanely and respectfully as I possibly can. But it's, it's, I know it's, it happens. I don't think it was Molly. I don't think it was one of the cats because there was no mark on the body. There was no mark where it had been grabbed or bit or anything. It was just completely, it looked like a perfect bird. There no marks, no wounds, no anything. So I think, and also Molly hadn't been in that, vicinity for a while so I'm, I don't think it was her I don't think she attacked it I think it was something else maybe it was maybe it died of just natural causes I don't know but yeah that's my trauma oh on a Tuesday morning too I'll check back with you later oh and by the way um I did film this footage because I thought the bird was actually okay I thought it was just going to get up and fly away and I'd have some footage of like a release um but no that that didn't happen so if you are of a sensitive disposition just fast forward about 20 seconds oh no Oh, I've just seen this poor bird flapping around, this poor pigeon. Oh no, I think it's a goner look. Oh no. I saw Molly chasing it, I don't know whether she got it or not. <sighs> oh no. I don't know what to do about it. I don't think it can be saved. Okay, and I also wanted to show you this. So we have um, a, a really big old hawthorn hedge, as you can see, going down there. Now the neighbors on the other side put a fence on their side. And obviously that blocks animals, it stops animals from traveling um, their natural paths. Something has made a hole underneath the hedge. And it's quite a big hole, if you can see. Now this brick, which is quite a heavy brick, it's an old Victorian brick, so it's really heavy, very dense, I put down there and I brushed all the soil back as well and something keeps moving it up. Now it must be quite a strong creature to have moved that heavy brick up there from down there. Any ideas what it is? We, we do have foxes, so it could be a fox, but I'm thinking more along the lines of a badger even though I have never actually seen a badger. Let me know what you think made this curious Hill. Hello and welcome to Wednesday the 12th of September 2018. Uh, I need to catch up with you guys because I didn't really vlog much yesterday really. I had quite a busy day making videos. I think I made a total of five videos yesterday. The Royals were very exceedingly busy so I did lots of videos on the Royals and we went shopping like we do usually on a Tuesday so we did our weekly shopping and I had a phone call from Jason's parents cancelling visiting for this week because his dad is poorly 
Um, I think he's been sick quite a bit, so, so probably we won't be doing any of Jason's family visiting this week. I've just zoomed in and Molly is drinking from the bird bath. Um, I know I keep going on about this, but she did pass a stool. It was quite dry and hard, so I'm going to carry on with the medication that the vet gave and hope that just sorts it all out. And I also have sat next to me a Rory who looks very comfortable on the storage bench. And of course, my cup of tea. Okay, so we are now going to take out our fruit bushes, which I'm cutting them down now, and we are going to replace it with some meadow mat, which I'll show you when we get it. So I've cut most of them down. Um, they do need digging out because they are quite deep rooted. So what, what the plan is, I want to turn this into a wildflower meadow because nobody actually ends up eating the fruit. I don't make any jam from it. So I think it's better if we turn it into a wildflower meadow, a little bit like this. But I do want to take this up and also lay the meadow mat here. And I'll show you what meadow mat is later. Okay, so I've just fed Molly the rest of these sardines, Ocean Rise sardines, and there she is um, eating her sardines. And I am making myself my tuna and hummus. What I do is I just flake with a fork some tuna, and I have um, tuna steak in spring water into a bowl. Then today I am having caramelised onion hummus, date the 16th of September, so we are well within date. So next you add all of the hummus to the tuna and you mix until it is light and fluffy. Okay, so it is all mixed together, a bit like um, kind of like a light fluffy mousse. I have no idea if anyone else does this with hummus, tuna and hummus. And then I also serve it with um, some simple grissini breadsticks. Hello and welcome to Thursday. It is Thursday already, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I am off shopping with my mother and my grandmother to Sainsbury's, just like I was last week, except my mother is with us this week, so I'll see what footage I can get from there. Okay, I'm really, really sorry I didn't get any chance to vlog at all while I was at Sainsbury's, but I will show you what I've come home with. Um, basically, it's all just junk. And my snack for now. So I had a southern fried chicken wrap with creamy coleslaw. And if you can see, that's what I've got there. Um, my nan had some donuts. She took two out of the pack of five and gave me three. That's very naughty. I also had a Victoria strawberry conserve and cream sponge. Um, that's for me and Jason later in the evening when we sit down and have a cup of tea and watch our favourite YouTube videos. And I also got for me and Jason some St Clement's cheesecake slices, which look really lovely. And who do we have here? Hello, it's a Rory and Molly's bunting the phone. Are you bunting the camera, Molly? She is, she's here, look. Hello, hello. Molly, we can't see Rory. We can't see, there he is. Look at the gorgeous boy. Beautiful, beautiful kitty. <laughs> I know you want to be seen too. There you go. Hmm. It's lovely and sunny. Look, it's beautiful and sunny. Look at the weather. Oh, it's gorgeous. Let's peep through the blinds. Wow, look at that gorgeous day. Big fluffy clouds. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> and the cats have been lying here together while I've been shopping. Oh my goodness, I've just um, had a knock on the door and I've just opened it and a delivery man gave me this little parcel and it's it's just polystyrene all wrapped up and I have no idea what it is but I will open it on my live chat. Hello and welcome to Friday. It's Friday already. Have you got that Friday feeling? So what's happening today? Well I am going with my 
mum and my grandmother to what we call in the UK a garden centre. So I want to show you exactly what a British garden centre is and I will try and get as much footage inside as I possibly can. Garden centres in the UK are kind of like you know a day out or an afternoon out. People like to go to them on the weekends or in the week if they have the time. Here we are arriving at the garden centre. Let's try and find a place to park. Lots of beautiful plants, look! And even some money off offers. And look at these amazing toadstools. So in the UK, we are getting ready for autumn or winter. And of course, the plants are reflected. But I love these hydrangeas. Look at the blue. But of course, to keep them blue, I think you have to keep them in acidic soil. I think it's a high acidity. And of course, lots and lots and lots of winter pansies, loads of different colours. Um, I think I'll definitely be getting some of these. So I've got to show you these. Look at all these winter red robins. Look, how, how much more typically British could you get? Look how cute they are, and the little tiny ones too. And these bird feeders. Look at the half-eaten apple. How cute. I want one. And one with a robin in. Look, like half a shell, the little tiny baby robin. And water features. So they also have a pet's corner and an aquarium, as well as all the other garden tools and everything else too. They also sell garden furniture, kind of next to cloves as well, so this is a typical British garden centre. So it's coming up to the time of the poppy, and look at all these you can buy, including the really cute ceramic ones, which I think I may have to get one to represent my nan and the other my granddad. Let's go for a little wander, shall we? So as you can see, there's kind of everything here. There's cakes, there's greetings cards, loads of knickknacks and flowers and real flowers, fake flowers. Um, obviously, this is what I've bought in my trolley and including the pansies, I had to get the pansies. They just need to go in my borders which I will film for my weekly vlog I'll film myself planting them but look at all this really cute stuff um, just you can wander for ages just trying to find things discovering things <gasps> I see pink I see flamingos I see llamas look at that cute llama I think he's a doorstop he is look <gasps> so fluffy I love him I need that llama in my life and look at the flamingos, how cute! <laughs> now I had to show you these because I already have some of these ducks. The ducks in wellies, I mean they are just so amazing, look. Wow, look at the one with the open beak, I think he's so cute. Wow. And I've actually got one of the big ducks as well, so I've got a small duck and a big duck. And these ceramics, is that a molly cat? It is, it's a molly cat. And there's all kinds of perfumes and hand lotions and crockery. Typical British garden centre. So this says, I'm the crazy cat lady. And this is the crazy cat house. Um, yes, very true. And here's another funny one. Um, marriage is all about finding that special person to annoy for the rest of your life. Um, can relate. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, these cakes. I see Victoria Sponge. Wow. I can only dream of making one like that. And just look at these teas. I mean, I know those of you um, in my live chats really like tea. And there's such an assortment of tea here. And jams and pickles and preserves and all kinds of things. 
uh, really kind of like old fashioned handmade or rather homemade jam um, Mrs Bridget's that's Scottish that one's a Scottish one strawberry I do like that one um, yes there's just so many so much choice if you are really into your jams and sauces and pickles and that kind of thing of course a British flag why not um, these kettle crisps or these piper crisps yes they are really lovely too um, I hope you're enjoying this little walk around by the way do let me know in the comment section below I found it the Californian poppy this is what Megan had represented in her coat of arms and how about the fawny issue of a cactus okay so we're just in the shop next door and it's a traditional country English farm shop with um, really fresh vegetables and homemade cakes and everything's homemade and fresh look at those beets I love those beetroots um, wow look at all these vegetables if you like your veg this is the place to come and those dirty potatoes um, the dirtier the potato the better um, also kind of quiches and there's a, a, a kind of pastry section uh, on with cakes and of course jams as well even more jams to show you there's just so much and of course these are all handmade and hand iced um, somebody local makes them for this shop Nice. I don't know what to have. Um, I've not had lunch yet, so I'm thinking I may go to over here and look at the pastries in a moment. Okay, so I bought a pasty. Um, I'll have this later when I get back home. Let's just have a little wander around the rest of the shop. Um, Okay, fresh bread as well and kind of seeds and that kind of thing. Taking a look inside the new Aldi of all places. Just had to show you this. Look, it's Hello Magazine, Fashion Queens um, and it's got Megan and Catherine. spider that's been living in our house that you've just ignored for the past five weeks oh it is look is it alive oh you've killed it yay rory you've got the spider rory we've been terrified by that spider for weeks well done look did molly help as well did molly get it why are you going in the utility rory come here come here come Boy, you got rid of the spider. Is that the one that's been living in the fireplace? Are you, have you come to take the glory? Was it Rory? Or did you do it? Did you help as well? Did you help? Rory, it was you. Come here, good boy. Oh, I heard you catching something. It was. It was you. Well done, Rory. Good boy. Come on. Come on back. Good boy. Oh, you're so good. You've got the spider, yay. Unless, of course, it's just pretending to be dead. Um, No, I think it looks pretty dead to me. Good boy, Rory. You are fabulous, darling. Hey, guys. Um, I've just finished doing two live opening, unboxing, tasting American candy videos um so i'm a little bit exhausted now i've just finished kind of uploading them i just need to make some better thumbnails other than just the screenshot that they've kind of automatically chosen um i'm going to be having a cup of tea and then i think that's going to be almost it for saturday i'm just going to watch some of my favorite youtube channels and that's kind of it oh by the way i realize i haven't showed you the fabulous present that jason got me for my birthday i'll just turn the camera around so you can see Hey, look, it's my Apple Mac. Woohoo! Look, isn't it fabulous? Um, so those are the two videos I've just um, finished making. But look, my Apple Mac, how fabulous. Thank you so, so much to my most fabulous partner, Jason. 
It is Saturday the 15th of September 2018 and it is Prince Harry's 34th birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday Prince Harry. Hello and today is Prince Harry's 34th birthday so I would just like to take this opportunity to send my personal birthday wishes, my best happy birthday wishes to Prince Harry. And also at the end of this video please feel free to leave your own birthday messages to Prince Harry. Who knows, he might look, I don't know. Um, but yes, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Prince Harry's year so far and it's still not over, he's still got an incredible year ahead. But certainly his birthday year, 2018, his 34th birthday year, has been an incredible year. Not only has he had a very successful year in terms of his charity work and everything that he's doing in that direction is going incredibly well with the Royal Foundation and all of his personal achievements with the Invictus Games and so on, but also the biggest highlight of the year must surely be his wedding, his wedding to previously Meghan Markle, who is now the Duchess of Sussex. So he became a Duke 2018, his 34th year was the year he became a Duke, the year he got married, and the year that he is finally going to plan, we think, to start a family. Who knows when the pitter-patter of tiny Sussexes may be on the way. So there's lots to look forward to in the upcoming year for Prince Harry, but also a lot to look back on um, with great joy and happiness. And of course that amazing wedding, um, who can forget the amazing wedding? Incredible, that must surely be his personal highlight. Please let me know in the comment section below also your personal memories of this last year and which was your favourite moment. So all that's left for me to say is a really really big happy birthday Prince Harry. Hello, so I've just finished my live chat, this is me just finishing my live chat. Um, I just thought I'd, well it's been a really really funny live chat because we've had uh, the great Harry and Meghan. Uh, let, oh, let's go and have a look at them shall we? <laughs> let's go around and take a little peek. Um, so yes, we've had um, Harry and Meghan and, um, and me. So let's see if we can do a little bit of a... <laughs> yeah, we kind of, it's me in the background with Harry and Meghan. Um, and I did give my little Harry a bit of a kissy for his birthday. Uh, so yeah, Harry, a big, big, huge happy birthday from me. Mwah. And also, I wanted to show you what my room kind of looks like after I've just finished a live chat. So with all the openings, this is what I can see. I'm just going to turn the camera around. Look! Crikey. Um, yeah, so this is my floor after I have been doing all my openings and everything god look so this is like from the other angle now i know you couldn't see the portrait properly in the live chat because of the light so i thought i'd give you um actually you, st you still probably can't see um but yeah oh, you still can't see right i'm gonna go over here where it's a bit where can you where can you see okay let's go let's put it over here i'm gonna put it Okay, let's put it here so you can see. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is the portrait. Isn't it cool? Look, it's amazing. Um, thank you so, so much. Um, if I step away, you can probably see. Now, whilst I was clearing away my fruit bushes, I did mention that I wanted to put down something called meadow mat, and it is a wildflower matting. And I said that I'd show you. So here it is. It's wildflowers for easy gardening. And there is a description, obviously this is the website, you can go and take a look yourself. I do not know if it's available in your country, but it's basically like turf. And you just lay it down on top of prepared soil, so no stones, nicely raked. Um, and then look, you can grow basically a meadow. Um, so there you go, look, you just lay it as turf and it can create a floral border between lawns. And you can choose from a range of wildflower mats each with its own different mixture of grasses. So what plants will I find in meadow mat? Well, there's all kinds. You can choose different style meadow mats for different things. So you can have traditional meadow mat, meadow mat for birds and bees, cottage garden meadow mat, woodland shade meadow mat. There's all kinds of different ones. Um, and I'm just gonna go to the top and see if I can just find some photographs or something. So I'm particularly interested in the birds and bees because we have a lot of wildlife. So I'm just going to let this load and we can take a little look 
at the meadow mat for birds and bees. Okay, so feed the birds with meadow mat for birds and bees. Meadow mat for birds and bees. Wildlife interest all year round with summer flowers and autumn seed heads to attract birds and bees. So it should look something like that. Meadow mat for birds and bees is a pre-grown blanket of flowering plants and grasses designed to make it easy to bring nature into your garden. This particular meadow mat variety blends together 43 different species of UK native flowering plants and grasses, all of which are particularly useful to birds, bees and other pollinating insects. And there we go. So there's lots and lots of information and also it shows you what kind of seeds are contained within the meadow mat. And I think all you do is literally, um, like I say, you lay it down on prepared earth, on prepared soil, and then I think you mow it once um, in September or October, or you can leave the seed heads on over winter. And basically that's it. It kind of grows every year. And there's um, a few more different things, different seeds and varieties of plant which are in the meadow mat. There's quite a lot. How to care for your meadow mat. So all you need to do is let it grow, flower and set seed from about March onwards. There are no jobs to do in summer or autumn. In late winter, cut the meadow mat down to about 10 centimetres high and remove all the clippings. Ah, so it is actually um, late winter that you do it. Hello, um, I'm back. So those of you who watched my live chat will know that Betsy sent me this lovely uh, box of sweets uh, or chocolate. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, and I couldn't open it because there's a bit of uh, sticky tape and I couldn't get into it. And I did say that I was going to open it in my weekly vlog to show you guys. So here I am with my knife so I can cut the tape um, and hopefully I'll be able to get into it <laughs> without too much difficulty. And then I will show you uh, what, is, what is inside. We will do an unboxing for my weekly chat. Okay, so this is what I can see. Um, it's Daisy Duke's American Candy Store. I don't know um, if you've heard of that before. Oh, okay, wow, look. Oh, wow, look at that selection. My goodness, look at that. Uh, that's really something. Wow, look at that. Um, awesome American candy, Daisy Dukes, AmericanCandyStore.com. Okay, what have we got? I'm gonna leave that there. Can you see that? Okay, I'll leave it there like that. Um, let's start with the top one. We have a Charleston Chew. Um, by the way, leave comments in the comment section if you've tried these and do you like them. So a Charleston Chew, chocolatey, artificially flavoured. Well, of course it would be. Uh, try frozen. You're supposed to freeze it. My goodness, okay. Um, you freeze it. I'm not even going to read the nutrition facts because it's probably really bad for you. Oh no, calories 230, it's not too bad. Um, so you're supposed to try it frozen. Let me know, have you tried that frozen before? Now I've heard of these, but I've never tried it. By the way, I've never tried, I don't think, any of these, no. Um, a baby roof. Nestle, but, but we have Nestle. Um, first in with peanuts, rich caramel and chewy nougat. I like nougat. Um, a, a baby roof. Why are they called baby roofs? I have no idea. Um, let me know. Have you tried baby roofs? I look forward to these. Um, we have a, oh my, a musketeers. I appreciate you three musketeers. Oh, the three musketeers. I appreciate you three musketeers. Um, what is all this about? Share a bar to throw, share a bar to hashtag throw shine. I'm not sharing my chocolate. Chocolate is not for sharing, despite what they try and tell you. Um, okay. I don't know why they've colour coded the um, nutrition information green, because it certainly isn't healthy. Um, I look forward to trying all these. Um, oh, Henry Nestle. Two peanutty caramel fudge bars in milk chocolate. An O. Henry. Seriously? Oh my god, what's the date on this? Oh, September. Best before 2018. September. Well, I think... We, we, I need to eat these pretty quick then, don't I? Look. <laughs> Are these all out of date sweets? Hang on, let me check, check the dates. Um... Where are we? Oh no, the first 2019. I think it might just be this O. Henry. 
And first of all, I thought the 8 was a 0, it went off in 2010. And I was like, oh my goodness. No, I think it's 2018, September, so I need to eat this one pretty pronto. Um, but it is a best before date, obviously, so that's okay. A Tootsie Roll! A Tootsie Roll? What on earth's a Tootsie Roll? Um, I look forward to trying these. I will try them in a separate video, obviously. Tootsie Roll. Um, it's very, very hard. What on earth are these things? Uh, Reese's Sticks. Chocolate flavoured coating, peanut butter and crispy waffles. Okay, like waffle biscuits, but peanutty. Um, Americans seem to like their peanut butter, don't they? Um, peanut butter cups. Ah, now, we, we do have peanut butter cups. They've only just kind of come into the UK, but I've never tried any. Um, but they aren't quite the same as these. So, two cups inside, milk, chocolate, uh, praline. I like praline. With a smooth peanut butter and grape filling. Grape and peanut? What? Um, okay. Interesting, to say the least. Uh, we have some lemon heads. Oh, my goodness, I tried the lemony lemon heads when I opened the lemon heads in my uh, sweet tape, my American candy sweet tasting video. And I liked the lemon heads, but what are these? These are different flavour. They're berry. Well, I did like the lemon one, so I'm probably going to like these as well. Uh, we also have Boston baked beans, candy coated peanuts. Candy coated peanuts. I've never had candy coated peanuts before, ever. My goodness, can you see those? I've never had those ever. Um, a lollipop, a jolly what? A jolly muncher or something, is that? Jolly something or other? I can't see because it's the label screwed up and if I open it, it'll um, it'll open. I don't want to spoil it. Um, let me know if you've had those. And Reese's, two Reese's, um, individual peanut butter, what? Chocolates, I think, perhaps. Um, wow, thank you so, so, so much, Betsy. Um, I really look forward to trying all of these and I will make a separate video for it. Uh, by the way, there is no song this week. Um, I couldn't think of a, an appropriate song to do. So uh, maybe if you want to see a song, maybe leave some song suggestions and I might be able to do them. Um, but I didn't really have time and there wasn't really anything that kind of fitted with the theme of the video, if indeed there even is a theme. Uh, but yes, at the end of the week, uh, Molly is okay. Um, she's fine. Uh, she's still taking a little bit of her medication. Uh, but yeah, as far as I'm aware, she's fine and happy and healthy. Because I know a lot of you were asking about Molly in my live chat this week. And I said, watch the weekly vlog. Um, so, so, so yes, Molly is okay. As of now, Sunday, uh, Molly is okay. And of course, I will be vlogging next week, a whole week's worth of vlog. So let me know if you've enjoyed this vlog and also um, what you'd like to see in a weekly vlog. What what actually would you like to see from me? Um, and if you tell me also what you've enjoyed um, of what I've already shown you of bits of my life. It is just basically bits and bobs, uh, moments of my life behind the throne. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also hit that notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me in Shropshire, goodbye.